Hey guys, we're back here with Claude Alec, and he is here to talk about Once on the Isle of Spice. It's a book that he wrote. It is a mystery, but it's more than just a mystery. Tell us a little bit more about your book. Uh, Once on the Isle of Spice is a story uh, it contains three love stories, a murder mystery, betrayal, and an escape from prison. It's yeah, yeah. Well, and what sets this apart? Because I'm thinking that this is like, oh, I think of uh, mod, like noirs. It's like whodunit kind of uh, books. But you said that there's more to this book because um, it involves religion, voodoo, and other things like that. Right, right. This, you know, this the story surrounds. Uh, there's a lot of magical realism in the story, and the story surrounds the idea that there is a group of uh, ex-slaves, murdered ex-slaves. Uh, trapped in a field of cane in a place called the Valley of Bones. And uh, the main character in the story must uh, get them freed from the Valley of Bones in order for the village and everything to survive. Yeah. And so that is, that is his mission. Nice. Oh, who's, who is the main protagonist of this? The story? main protagonist is a fellow called Ezekiel Augustine. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Augustine. Oh, Augustine. that's really cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah. tell us a little bit more about this character. What drives him? What, what is his motivation? Well, you know, early in the story, there's a, a fella that's in jail, and he's in jail. He's, he's one of the love stories. His girlfriend was drowned and so forth, and he is in jail. And uh, Ezekiel wants to find out why he's in jail. Hmm. So nobody would tell him exactly why he's in jail, so, he's, uh, hmm. so, so he decided to go on a mission to find that out himself. And the setting is very, very tropical, um, once in the Isle of Spice, as you can see in this cover right here. And apparently it's an uh, Afro-Caribbean area, so it's going to be kind of basically in the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, no, it's island of Grenada. Oh, Grenada. Which, right. And it's, um, the story so it sort of takes place in a village, in a village called Jean Anglais. Yeah. And uh, it's all the villagers are, uh, you know, milling around and doing things because times are changing for them. They are, uh, the government has just got permission to be self, the island will be self-governed. So people are coming into the village and speaking oh. to them about it and so forth. But the superstition is still there and everybody's still wondering, hmm, are these real people? Are these spirits? Where do they come from? You know, it's that kind I of see. thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. strangers, anything unknown is ultimately uh, seen as something that could be um, untrustworthy, superstitious. Exactly. You know, any, any kind of change is just like, wait a minute, this is, uh, this is a test. Right, this could be a test, you know, from the spirits. It could be, you know, that. So they ask him all kind of questions, and one of the old people in the village started telling him stories about a time when God and the devil shared a, a, a dwelling on the top of the mountain right outside of the village. Hmm. And, you know, and they, yeah. So uh, what, what is the biggest thing you want people to take away from this book once they read it? Well, uh, you know, in the day and age, you know, that we live in now, it seems that foreign, foreign things are kind of pushed aside and, you know, not really taken. So this is a, that all of these are universal themes. We are all human beings and we all, you know, we all need to learn to live together. So that is a part of, a part of the story. I, re I remember once reading, uh, this friend of mine gave me a little book called Rotten Rejections. And the, um, <clears throat> one of the ones that come to mind is the one that, uh, a rejection for Pearl Box, The Good Earth. And the things, uh, one of the, the editors said to her, uh, sorry to inform you that there's no one in America interested in anything in China. You know, how, how, how <laughs> wow. that's kind of me. It is pretty crazy. Crazy, crazy, but yeah. you know, I mean, it's because a classic. Because everything that, uh, a lot of things that we don't understand, it, like we're, even though we're not directly inf affected by China, we're definitely indirectly affected by China. Right, right. And the same thing can be said about uh, your book as well, is that uh, like you have a lot of the old, and then of course you have a lot of the new uh, colliding with one another, and it's just basically growing pains. Right, like, right. You know, it's a change. Right. Like, um, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, religion that's in it because you're talking a lot about voodoo, um, and so obia, obia, Ob right, obia, yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that, about that. What is that? Obia is a kind of a, a, it's a, it's a kind of a relative of voodoo, and um, there's a name of it as they practice it in Grenada, um, and 
one of the, how it works in the book is that this uh, gentleman, English gentleman, comes, a uh, fundamentalist preacher, comes to the village and start trying to convert everybody to Christianity. And uh, there will be a woman who's telling people, uh-uh, don't go his way. <laughs> he, could be a, he could be an evil spirit. Don't, don't do anything with him. Uh, they don't listen to him. And he starts building a church and so forth. And she, uh, she just sit back and watch the whole thing develop. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it's interesting. Like, um, in this book, it kind of seems like there's different narratives throughout the whole entire book. It's like, you have the people who are kind of watching things happen. There, You have people who are trying to stop this from happening. And then you have other people whose motives are to basically modernize. It's like, you guys now own your own country. Now what? Right, right. So that, that, that it's very interesting. Uh, it, there's, it looks like there's, it's like, from what I heard from this is like, oh, murder mysteries, but it's just more than that. Oh yes, oh yes, the murder mystery is sort of layered and it's got a nuance in there, but the, the main theme of the thing is change. It is change. Uh, because, you know, the main character, as he grows up, he realizes that it would be a very interesting thing to buy the whole valley the, with all the cane fields and uh, turn it into a giant farming co-op. So that was another motivating factor for him. And he uh, finally, uh, there's a blight hits the cane called red rot, and the cane starts dying, so he sees the opportunity to buy the piece of land with money from all, from his various mm -hmm. sources. So uh, where can people uh, find this book, and where can they find more information about you? Uh, the book can be, uh, is Shakespeare and Company, uh, Fact and Fiction, online, yeah, it's all it's all over the place. Yeah. Wait, so, if you guys want to check out this book, it is a very uh, like it, it feels like it's a um, one of a kind for sure. Because I've yeah. never heard of anything like the settings or anything like this. So, it's very interesting to see how uh, I'm definitely going to read it for sure because I just bought the book from Claude. <laughs> but uh, it's called Once on the Isle of Spice, and you guys can get it at the local uh, any local Missoula bookstore. All right. Yeah. Is that anything yeah. else you want to say? Yeah. Well, I'm a long time Missoulian. I've lived here for over uh, 42 years. It's, uh, it's been a, it's a pleasure to live here. Made it home. My kids are born here. It's, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Claude. Yeah. And this is Claude Alec. He's the author of Once on the Isle of Spice.